Hello everyone, welcome to Abdev channel. This is the part 2 of the spring annotations video tutorial series which we have started. In the last video we talked about at the date auto wired annotation which serves the purpose of the dependency injection which is one of the basic principles of the spring framework. There is another uh, basic principle of spring framework which is the bean life cycle management process. So when I say bean life cycle management is uh, how to create the beans, how to instantiate the beans, how to distribute those created beans to the application whenever it asks and how to destroy the beans. So basically the bean life cycle uh, from starting from the creation, uh, right from the creation and the distribution and the destruction of that object how the bean life cycle is being managed. This is one another basic principle of the spring framework apart from the dependency injection. Where the auto wired annotation is used for dependency injection. Similarly, there are annotations available in spring framework to manage the bean life cycle to instruct the spring container to manage this particular bean okay as we know spring application context stores the objects and manages those objects right suppose if you are writing xml configuration and you are maintaining all the beans related configuration in that xml beans.xml so whenever you load that beans.xml into application context Right, the application context is aware of those beans that are defined in that beans.xml and it will man it will create the beans, it will manage the beans, it will destroy the beans, it will distribute those beans defined in that beans.xml with which you have created that application context. But while we are working with annotations, right, we don't use any uh, XML. Then how do we instruct Spring container? or the application context to manage my class from your context okay so for that we have a couple of annotations okay let me i mean there are a couple of annotations the first one is component annotation next is controller annotation next is rest controller annotation next one service annotation next one is repository okay these are the different kinds of annotations which are helpful to instruct spring container that you have to manage my class you have to maintain you have to create the objects you have to distribute the objects of my class from your context to the application okay these are the different annotations which we use at the date component is basically a generic type of annotation. It just instructs the spring container, just manage my object, just manage my bean. Okay. But there are other annotations like controller, rest controller, service repository. We will talk about all these annotations in the future tutorials or videos. If for in this video, we will stick to the discussion on component annotation. But at controller and uh, at controller is also another type of annotation. Okay, at controller, service repository. These are all uh, similar to the at component. I mean, these are these annotations can also be used on the classes where you want to instruct the Spring to manage its bean lifecycle process. Along with that, I mean, controller, service repository. They are built on top of the component annotation. Along with the component annotation functionality, they are having some specific functionality. Okay. What is that specific functionality? We will get to know okay, in the future videos. But for now, controller service repository are the add-ons annotations on top of the component annotation. Okay. Similarly, uh, REST controller, right? REST controller is an add-on on controller annotation which means that rest controller is a combination of controller and component it can instruct the bean 
and it can also be having the functionality of controller and it is also having some specific functionality that is specifically designed with rest controller okay so let us start in this video we will talk about uh, at the date component annotation okay so basically at component annotation is used on a class okay let me create a project this is the project which i have already created to explain the component annotation example okay now let me create a class in this okay let me create a class employee okay the moment i create i am creating an employee class in the same package where my application class exists okay so the moment i create a, an employee class here let me run it now okay let me run it as spring boot application Okay, let me open application properties so that we can see the logs whether the bean is getting created bean is being managed by the spring or not okay logging dot level dot org dot spring framework dot factory so this is the log we have to enable to see the bean life cycle process log okay now let me run it again let's see see here we have created an employee class right Generally, if a spring is creating a bean for it, it will create it with a name employee with starting letter as small letter, similar to the say, class name, right? So let me open it and search for it whether spring has created a bean for it or not. See, it has not created, okay? Which means that we have to, we are not instructing the spring to create a bean for this. So we have to use the add component annotation here. Then let us see whether it will the spring container will create a bean or not. See this uh, creating a shared instance of singleton bean. Okay. So this is how we are instructing now using at component uh, annotation to the spring framework, create a bean and manage my bean lifecycle for this class employee. Okay. It will manage all the objects. It will destroy the objects. It will distribute all the objects of this class to the application whenever it asks. Okay. That is about uh, at component annotation. So if for example, um, let me inject, I mean, we want to see whether the object is really created or not, right? So let me create one more class here, organization. Okay, into this organization class, I'm trying to inject the employee class, okay? Private uh, employee. EMP. I have to use auto while right because I want the dependence injection to be done by the spring containers. Okay, now uh, we have the employee organization class that is having the dependency employee on employee and it is it is annotated with that auto wired. And we also have the component similar to component annotation on employee we also have to declare the same component annotation on organization as well because we want organization class also to be maintained by spring container right so if you see it now 
we can see organization object is also being maintained by spring framework see this organization creating shared instance of single convenience along with the employee but how do we know whether uh, whether employee object is being injected into this uh, organization bin or not okay so for that uh, let us say with an example let us see with an example suppose i am having a constructor here okay here i am printing just the employee object employee object in constructor now let us see let me run it let me take this log okay what is that logger i have to search for this log right we have seen that right we have seen that organization an employer they are being created but let us see whether organization is being injected with the employee object or not if you see this here we are having null okay so with this example we are not able to prove that object is being created or not or it is being injected or not object is being created we are seeing it but we don't know whether it is being injected the actual object is being injected or not because we are print we are getting null from when we print the emp object because let uh, let us see okay let me create a controller for this or the controller i'll annotate this as at rest controller I'll give the request URL as slash org. I'll have one method public void get employee get employee. It will just print. Okay. i mean it will just call i mean we are going to have one control one method here okay get employee public void get employee let me add it here first it will just print the employee object in get employee now let me call that get employee method from here we need our organization class right here we need that to be injected by using it auto while organization now i have to call that method get employee okay we are calling get employee method from here and get employee is also printing along with the constructor of that organization class now let us see with an example uh, let me run it employee object in constructor is null right but they are actually created our controller is created organization is created okay employee is also created let me search with this employee object in get employee we don't have that logger because in our controller um, we have to mention some request mapping and we have to hit that url right slow uh, let me run it again let me hit that url http colon double slash localhost colon 8080 slash org slash emp that is what my url right see this the moment you say 
let me take this log now in get employee we have the employee object here right in get employee we have it but not in constructor so by the time the organization class is being initialized constructor is i mean the employee object is being created but the actual the injection the dependency injection if you see auto wiring is being done here okay auto wiring after the constructor execution i mean first of all it scans all the classes which are annotated with that component and it creates the beans okay but the dependency injection happens later on okay while creating the pin itself right so uh, that dependency injection happens after the constructor execution and the emp object will be created here okay emp object will be printed here so uh, that's all about uh, at component annotation let me show you another example uh, yep say for example we have this employee class right and my organization is not having uh, is having this employee but my reference variable name is uh, emp name right so suppose if i change this to emp12 okay and if i have okay let me change it here as well emp12 this organization is having okay let me go to the employee see here we can mention with which name the spring container has to create a bean for it right so we can mention that name as well uh, let me say emp okay or uh, employee 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 emp abc let me give this okay so employee object i mean the bean with the name emp abc will be created by spring but here uh, we are having only emb okay we are having only emb now let me run this what will happen we will see yeah it is still running right because see this uh, employee object emp abc with the name emp abc is created but we are still getting that okay let me run it here by executing a request yeah see this uh, employee object in get employee we are still giving getting that object even though the name is different right even though the name with which the employee object is created the bean name is emp abc but we are injecting we are accepting it with employee emb because auto wiring works by default by employee um, by type right if you want the uh, if you want the injection to be done based on name then we have to use like this okay uh, let's say for example okay so the name will be employee with small letter right then you have to use employee here then it considers the name it will, uh, then auto wiring will be done based on name we have seen this in our uh, earlier tutorial how the auto wiring works right if you want to get more details on auto wiring process i recommend you to go through that video i will mention that in the description let me hit it now see this uh, the, this is how the auto wiring working by name as well 
here. If you have given the different name, then auto wiring works by default by type. But if you have given the same name, then auto wiring works by the name. Okay. That's all. I mean, there is one more thing which I want to cover along with our edit component. Okay. Let me create one new package com.appdev.vivo and let me move this employee to vivo so uh, employee is not part of the app package it is part of the vivo package now let me run it if you see this field employee in organization required a bean of type employee that could not be found because organization requires a bean employee even though you are you are mentioning it as auto wired but spring container is saying i am not finding that bean in my context so i am not able to inject that so your auto wired annotation is giving me the error okay i am not able to proceed on that because spring container right uh, while it is scanning for classes with at the date component annotation right uh, during container startup it's uh, it starts scanning for all classes which are annotated with at the date component to create the beans for it right so while scanning it scans in the class path also it scans in the path where this uh, launcher class or the main class exists suppose it all it will scan all the classes that are annotated with that component and those are present only in this package okay that's why it was working earlier right now we uh, we take it the employee class out of the app package and move it to the vivo package so spring container is not looking for classes which are uh, classes outside of this uh, launcher class suppose if you want to look for all packages even though they are outside of the your launcher class or the main class or the application class then you have to mention some attribute here what is that attribute scan base, scan base packages okay this is a string array com dot app dev so it will scan for all classes which are there in the packages starting with com dot app dev and which are annotated with at component annotation and it will create a bean whenever auto wired annotation is used on those beans in any other classes then it will inject those beans it will distribute them to those specific classes okay now let's run it earlier error should be gone now yeah there is no error no. application is started successfully if I, even if i run it now i should be able to get the lock yep okay so in summary what we have seen we have seen the uh, different annotations list of annotations which we use to create or to instruct the spring container how to create the beans for the classes which are there in your application how to instruct the spring container we have seen the list of annotations for it we have seen in detail with examples about the usage of add component and also we have seen uh, what will be the impact if we don't uh, mention all our classes in the main cl in the same package with the main class what we have to do what is the resolution for it okay how the uh, bean life cycle works i mean how the beans will be available when the bean uh, injection is happening during constructor we are not getting that uh, injected bean uh, only when we uh, only after the construction construction happens then only we are getting that bean so when we send a request to that uh, organization class then we are getting it right so all those examples we have seen in today's video about at the date component annotation in the next video we will talk about these annotations
head controller and head rest controller annotations okay that's all for today thanks for watching please give it a like share and subscribe to my channel thank you